the herd line news. I'm upset. I didn't think about that. What? That seems like a joy idea. A joy idea? Yeah, a, a joy idea that the doing the overtime like that. Although I'd probably get called uh, ridiculous for it. So I'm glad. Greg, and then people Greg would Jennings go, "How can you have kickers deciding Super Bowls?" And I'd be like, <laughs> "They they're increasingly they, kickers. They, really, they usually do. Yeah. Actually, the pay, every sing, uh, Patriots eight Super Bowls. The average score has been three points. Field goals have won Super Bowls for New England and lost them. Yeah. So ESPN's Seth Wickersham dropped a lengthy feature on the state of the Cleveland Browns organization this morning. Ooh. And the report details a heated meeting in which owner Jimmy Haslam and John Dorsey, the GM, told Hugh Jackson that he was fired. He did not go over well. Yeah. According to Wickersham, Jimmy Haslam and John Dorsey entered Jackson's office and told him the team was going to move in a different direction. Jackson asked why he was being fired. The team quit on you, is what Dorsey replied. And then Hugh Jackson said, get the bleep out of my office. Allegedly, obviously, according to the report. Um, not exactly the way you want to leave an organization, but it's pretty on brand for what that situation was. Because from all accounts, this was just an ego war between John Dorsey and Todd Haley and Hugh Jackson. I mean, very, from the very beginning, watching um, well, Hard Knocks, we, it, we got the feeling like there is a sh severe lack of structure within well, this organization. Haven't we always said, Joy? That the key, well, I've always said it, but I believe I was told this years ago, a decade ago by an executive. He said the key in this league is do you have an A owner, an AGM, an A coach, and an A quarterback? He goes, if you do, like Philadelphia, even though Philadelphia had some problems this year, Jeffrey Lurie's an A, Howie Roseman's an A, Carson Wentz is an A, Doug Peterson, I think you have to put him in the A group. Here's the thing with Cleveland. Jimmy Haslam is not an A owner. John Dorsey got fired in Kansas City. We don't know if Baker's an A quarterback, and Freddie Kitchens is hell no an A coach. This is still an organization with a lot of B's and C's in it. So I, th this idea that everybody like, ooh, they finished in third place, this league has a history. If you don't have four A's in the four key spots, you're going to be a roller coaster ride with streaks, good months, bad months, good halves, bad halves. I don't blame Cleveland for being optimistic. I mean, Baker did, in the end, have a great year. I mean, a record for a year. Rookie. For a rookie. For but, a rookie. I mean, he has, that's what he is. He's a yeah. rookie. So he did what he was supposed but to do. But Patrick Mahomes had a great year. Baker he's had not, a... He's technically not a rookie. I mean, I feel like he's a rookie, but he's technically not a rookie. Right. He'd be a rookie in the NBA. So I, I, I get them being optimistic. They have something to look forward to. They're excited about it. I just think... Maybe just be a little. Do you think Cleveland's a playoff team it. next year? Um, no, I do not. By the way, their schedule at New England, at Chicago, uh, play the Colts, the Ravens, the Packers. This is the... going to get clipped and played on the loop in Cleveland. No, I'm not saying they're again. bad, but I, I'm not either. And I and and again, we want Cleveland to be good. It doesn't help anyone if there's just this dud franchise in the right. league that every week when someone plays them, it's like not talking about that game. We want every game to be good. Right. Um, so. We're just waiting to see. Finally, uh, well, next, according to uh, ahead of hitting the free agent market this uh, March, Cole Beasley, Cowboys receiver, suggested the team's front office is dictating where passes are thrown. Yesterday, Stephen Jones brushed aside that notion during an appearance on the Rich Eisen show. I would hope that's just his frustration, but certainly uh, not at all the case. I mean, we. We don't get involved in that. You know, the only thing we ever do is decide to tell you if we're going to pay players a lot of money or we're going to trade for players and give up big picks so that we would never dictate to where balls go or things of that nature in terms of the game plan and getting involved with uh, what our coaching staff does to get ready to play a ball game. And certainly of all people, Cole's always involved in getting balls and getting catches. Yeah, by the way, it, it, let's not make the Cowboys out to be completely dysfunctional. They've proven through the draft. They're pretty functional. That That's something that would be, for a crazy town team, I don't think they're crazy town. I don't. Well, it's not unheard of that the front office would meddle in on-the-field situations or on-the-court situations in any sport. Like, it's it's not it's not some concept that's never been heard of before. Right. I think that this situation comes down to the fact that Beasley's targets dropped significantly once Amari Cooper showed up. Yes. And guess what? Yes, they Amari should. Cooper is the number one receiver, so they're going to drop. That's yeah. kind of how it works. You're a slot receiver. That's not a bad thing. That's actually the balance of so how it's, it's supposed to So it's what we would have predicted would happen. Right. Now, what he kind of backed off of it on Twitter and said, you know, the front office always dictates you know on the field situations because they're the ones that drafts and do the trades and like okay we all know that so what you're really implying is that they're saying they have yeah. to throw it to him finally
finally, the Steelers have apparently realized they might still need Antonio Brown because also maybe trading a player at $21.1 million cap hit might be a little difficult. Team captain Marquise Pouncey said earlier this week that he thought that the relationship between the team and Brown could be mended. And now, after Art Rooney II said weeks ago that he couldn't envision Brown being with the Steelers by training camp, he said yesterday, there are a lot of factors we have to take into account on it. We'd have to sit down with Antonio and understand where he is and make sure he understands where we are. There is some work to do before we figure that out. Now, the Patriots at the beginning of the year were completely unpatriot-like. We thought there was a yeah. huge rift between Kraft and Belichick yeah. and Brady and it's unfixable and who knows what's going to happen and they're going to be terrible this year. And we all know how that worked out. Now, I'm not saying that the Steelers have the ability to do what the Patriots do in that regard. But I do think that this is a situation where it's not as simple as trading Antonio Brown away. And it's going to not be a cap hit on the next two years, but this year it is if you do. And he's an all-time great player. So you may actually want to keep him on the team. If somebody gave me a starter and a second-round pick, I'd do it in a second. If you gave me a starting interior defensive lineman who I thought could, would be a 16-game starter and a high-level player and a number two pick in a second... I don't know. I think it's a possibility they still get in a room and figure it out. A slim, slim possibility. But, I mean, everybody might not be interested in Antonio Brown like that. So Somebody will get him. Uh, Joy with the news. Well, that's the news. And thanks for stopping by. The Herd Live I, You know, I can't, I can't believe today that um, Rob Parker and I agreed on something, which is a LeBron James situation, which is I don't think LeBron is... Uh, I said when LeBron got hurt, I was told early. The Lakers said it was day to day. I was told it was more serious than day to day. I said that two weeks ago. I said, you know, I'm, I'm hearing it's not a day to day thing, that it's a real thing. Well, LeBron's now missed 15 games. He's not going to play tomorrow night against the T Wolves. Uh, probably not going to play till next week. Has not had a full contact practice. Um, I, you know, and remember when Rich Paul came out. You know, he said, I don't give a blank what nobody thinks. We're going to do what's best for LeBron. When he feels he's best, he'll play. So there's been this situation where the Lakers, you know, released kind of a pedestrian press release. Rich Paul uh, represents uh, LeBron came out kind of over the top angst. Uh, my takeaway on this is it's a sensitive issue because LeBron has bailed on even his best friend D. Wade when he felt people got old. Or they weren't servicing sort of his greatest needs. If LeBron, if this is a real injury, they're trying to downplay it a little bit. If it's a real injury, that's okay. But if LeBron suffers before the end of the year a second injury, LeBron's now an old guy. And that's a big deal. Because I think increasingly Lonzo Ball is injury prone and Brandon Ingram's been a disappointment. And they are no longer top assets on the trade market. And they're not going to give up Kyle Kuzma because then if you get LeBron at 36 and Anthony Davis with no Kuzma, that's not a championship team. It is not. I don't buy that Kevin Durant's leaving. I just don't buy that. I don't think Kevin Durant's going anywhere. I think Kevin Durant realizes he's in the perfect place for Kevin Durant, which is on a team where he doesn't have to be the emotional leader. He can just be a scorer and have fun and have a life and hoop it. And that's what Kevin Durant wants to be. Kevin Durant doesn't want to go to New York and have to sit in front of the microphone for 45 minutes after every game, be the emotional leader, the, the, the spokesman of the team. Kevin Durant's in the absolute perfect spot for Kevin Durant. He can be a scorer and hoop it. He loves basketball. Basketball loves him. He doesn't have to be the best defensive player. He doesn't have to be the best ball handler. Doesn't have to be the emotional center of the team. Doesn't have to coach the team. And I don't think an old LeBron and Anthony Davis is a championship-level team. He didn't come to L.A. just to sell pizzas for Blaze Pizza. So I, this injury, I think they've been a little sensitive, and I think it was initially worse than everybody said. And Rob Parker agreed with me, and that's the last time we'll ever agree on the show. Don't let your age beat you. Speaking of age, it's time to refine your prime with M-Drive. Yeah, it's a daily supplement you can take, clinically tested, essentially boosts the natural testosterone already in your body. World-renowned formulator created it a decade ago. He got older in his 40s and 50s and wanted to feel like he did in his 20s and 30s. Now thousands, tens of thousands of men are part of Team M-Drive. Walgreens and Walmart have it. So does Vitamin Shop, GNC, and Sprouts. My listeners can get 20% off, though, if you go online buy mdrive.com and the promo code is heard refine your prime don't let age beat you it's creeping up on all of us fight it off stronger 
Leaner, buymdrive.com. Promo code HERD, 20% off. 